It's a leading cause of death in this country, but many people killed by sudden cardiac arrest don't have to die. Automated external defibrillators, or AEDs, save lives. The defibrillator resynchronizes and shocks the heart rhythm back to normal. They save lives. AEDs save lives. Local businesses take the lead to make this a heart-safe community. We're proud to be partnering with Salinas Valley Memorial with this program and uh, look forward for more businesses to uh, take a leadership role in the community to offer AEDs so we get more of them out there and save more lives. And schools become equipped with AEDs to avoid the tragedy that happened to one North Monterey County teen. One incident like this changes many people's lives in a dramatic way. That and more next on Lifeline TV. Hello, I'm Dr. Bob Morali and welcome to Lifeline TV. This is the room at Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital's emergency department where patients come when they've suffered a sudden cardiac arrest. But all too often by the time they arrive here, they've gone several minutes without the medical attention they need. Fortunately, there is a device that could change all that. It's called an Automated External Defibrillator, or AED. This little unit can restore a normal heartbeat, and it can mean the difference between life and death. Through Salinas Valley Memorial's Heart Save program, more of these are being placed throughout the Central Coast, and we're making our way toward becoming a heart-safe community. Deadly. There we go. There it is. Right there, the shot. Let's see if it comes out. There he is. Sudden cardiac arrest is death due to an abnormal heart rhythm. Sudden cardiac arrest is not the same as a heart attack. A heart attack occurs when one or more of the heart's major blood vessels are blocked. This cuts off blood and oxygen to the heart and the heart muscle starts to die. But sudden cardiac arrest occurs when an abnormal rhythm causes the heart to suddenly stop pumping blood. The bottom part of the heart is an abnormal heart rhythm called the ventricular fibrillation when all the little heart muscle cells in the bottom part of the heart are doing their own thing and not working together. This causes the heart not to be able to squeeze and people usually faint because they have no blood pressure. And if that ventricular fibrillation, chaotic heart rhythm is not restored to normal, they can die. Sudden cardiac arrest usually ends in death and it doesn't have to be that way. You know, if we make this technology available, we can interrupt that cycle of death to so many people. Numbers tell the true story of sudden cardiac arrest. It's a leading cause of death among adults in our country. Every year it kills 250 to 400,000 people. Once every minute, another American succumbs suddenly, without warning. Typically, only 5% of cardiac arrest victims survive, often because help arrives too late. In areas with a high number of defibrillators, that survival rate can jump to as high as 49%. In Monterey County, our survival rate is approximately 20%, above the national average, but far below what it could be. It takes only four minutes after sudden cardiac arrest before irreversible brain damage begins. A victim's chances of survival are reduced seven to 10% every minute that passes without defibrillation. Few attempts at resuscitation succeed after 10 minutes. Most victims are middle-aged or elderly. The average age is about 65 years old. Many victims are much younger. Salinas Valley Memorial's Heart Safe program is taking aim at these numbers by trying to get as many defibrillators out into our community as possible. When I've seen people have a cardiac arrest outside the hospital, if they don't get CPR or defibrillation early, they often don't survive to leave the hospital. On the other hand, if you have early defibrillation, they may walk out of the hospital just fine without any damage at all to their brain or heart. The need for a strong AED program is painfully apparent to one Central Coast family. Cooking was just one activity T.J. Quinnell enjoyed. There were many more. One skill, or rather aptitude I have, is a special relationship with animals. They all like me a lot. 
This bright 15-year-old boy was an honor student at North Monterey County High School. Scout sign. Just a few merit badges away from Eagle Scout. I'll do my best to do my duty to God my country. And a fit and active drug-free teen. TJ was above average in every way. He was an incredibly vital young man. In his freshman uh, careers choices class, he analyzed his uh, goals and expectations in terms of what kind of a lifestyle he wanted to lead and concluded that he needed to be the president of his own computer company in order to lead the lifestyle that he was looking for. So I think that was his, uh, one of his aims. He talked about attending MIT. He talked about spending his senior year in Japan as an exchange student because he had a lot of interest in the Japanese culture. He was very ambitious. There were, and there were a lot of things that he probably would have been very successful at. But TJ's bright future dimmed on February 15, 2001, when during his PE class, he suffered sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, the class was running sprints. So they were running uh, the length of the football field and then up the bleachers to the PE teacher. Uh, the, she was having them run in pairs. TJ was in the first pair to run. He ran his sprint got his time, was walking back along the bleachers to return to the starting point. The teacher was preparing for the next pair of students to run when she heard a commotion and turned in time to see TJ falling to the ground with the other student um, you know, grabbing his arm and basically breaking his fall. TJ now, the official term is persisting vegetative coma more colloquial way of putting it, lights on, nobody home. His eyes are open, his gaze wanders from side to side. You make a sudden, a sharp sound, he will jump. When he is in pain, he will cry. There's no personality. There is no expression of joy. There is no interaction. In effect, he is almost totally lost to us. In some ways it would almost be better if he were dead because then we could mourn. But what we have instead is someone who's not there and yet there he is. On one hand you, you hope he's not inside trying to communicate, but then on the other hand you miss him. His behavior can best be described, I think, as very similar to a newborn. He has no body control. He cannot hold his head up. Um, but worse than a newborn, he cannot swallow. Uh, he, he can't laugh. He, yeah, he, he can't laugh. He doesn't smile. He doesn't look at you. TJ needs to be bathed once or twice a day. He needs to have his face and hands washed regularly. He needs to have all of his muscles exercised two or three times a day so that they don't atrophy. Everything needs to be done for him. He must be rolled so that he doesn't develop sores and pressure points every couple of hours. He needs to um, have all of his cleaning and care done for him his feedings. He has a huge regimen of medications that he needs. In terms of our daily life, we are fortunate that TJ has two households. Uh, our household here and his mother's household in Ben Lomond. And so the two households are able to trade off his care rather than it being a 24-hour care in one place. He is fed four times a day uh, through a G-tube. Um, his uh, urine needs to be collected and disposed of. Virtually every body function, uh, with the exception of breathing, needs assistance. Everything needs to be done for him. It's taken my life and put away the old life, and I have started a new life. Everything that I had worked for, all of my savings, um, all of the stability that I'd built for my family. 
vanished that night. It was like moving into an alternate reality. Normal life certainly comes to a complete halt. Uh, mowing the grass, weeding the garden, planting the garden, uh, sweeping the dust bunnies out from underneath the couch, uh, washing, Grocery shopping. washing the dishes, <laughs> you know, doing the laundry, any of those sorts of things becomes a major challenge to try to work that into your day. It's impacted me very deeply. I have like, like a missing piece inside that, that I can't ever seem to place. <laughs> I can't ever seem to fill up the empty spot. I still can't really believe that, that this happened to TJ. Um, I'm still waiting for him to come home from school. I probably always will. His ex life expectancy is five to seven years, and he's lived nearly four of those since the accident. On the other hand, it's also possible with care, and we provide him the best care that we possibly can, that, and he hasn't had a respiratory infection or a bed sore in four years, it's possible he could outlive us. He could live 30 years, 40 years. I believe that if there had been a defibrillator out there with that class, or even back in the nurse's office, TJ would be fine now. He would be with his friends and his girlfriend. He would be off to college. Um, it's, it was estimated that it will cost $10 million to take care of TJ for his care. An, an AED costs 2000 The one wish that I would have for all of this is that the pain and, and anguish that we have gone through yep. can help serve to put these units into the schools so that no other parent will have to do it again. It's important that we give the schools the tools that they need to help save and protect our children. There are such simple, easy devices, and they can mean the difference between a whole healthy person and a family in ruins. Uh, TJ was given an assignment in school to uh, to be blindfolded for a time and learn what it was like to be blind. So this is what he wrote. Mm. Walking around blind is quite an eye-opening experience, if you'll excuse the pun. I thought about whether it would be better to be born blind or to become blind later in life. If you were able to see before, you would feel like you were losing a great treasure. If you were blind from birth, you would not know what you were missing. I have a new respect for the blind. Being blind requires a lot of determination, even stubbornness. You must not give up, or you will die. It's like what Miss Sullivan said, giving up is my idea of the original sin. I too shall not give up. In this class, or in my life. Quite a guy. Quite a guy. And I miss him. TJ's story has touched all of us at Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital. We've named the school portion of our Heart Save program Project TJ in his honor. And we thank his parents for sharing their story. On behalf of Salinas Valley Memorial Healthcare Systems, we would like to donate this AED to Anzar High School and welcome you to join our Heart Save partnership. For me, this is um, icing on the cake in terms of safety for our campus. It's just going to enhance that, and it feels like a tangible, a tangible way of, of um, providing extra safety. Thanks to a grant from Children's Miracle Network, Salinas Valley Memorial is now donating AEDs to all Monterey County high schools that would like to have one on campus. 
When Children's Miracle Network was approached to support the AED program, we were so pleased to be able to do it and provide the funds for it. We fund so many things throughout the community that benefit children of all ages, and it made perfect sense to come on board with a program that has proven to be so life-saving. And with all the sports and the activities involved in junior and high school levels, it just makes perfect sense. Sudden cardiac arrest kills 3,000 children each year in this country, usually without warning. An AED on a school campus benefits more than just the children. People, I think, assume the high school students as, as young people are not going to need the AED as much as someone who's older. Well, that in and of itself can be true. When you look at numbers, yes, there's a less likelihood of someone that young needing an AED. But you've got teachers, and then you've got sporting events, and all the parents. So you're bringing people, you're bringing the public into their facility, and there is the higher liability. It's also important to have them, I think, in the schools. It helps the educational process as more children see it, grow up learning the, the CPR, the AED process. It just brings to light heart disease, sudden cardiac arrest, and if we start in the schools, more people will be educated to them. And when you see them in an airport, in a shopping mall, um, you know, in sports arenas, people will know what to do and lives will be saved. This is a culture change and the only way to make the culture change is through a whole team education process. Well, the national survival rate of sudden cardiac arrest is under 5%. Uh, it kills more Americans per year than breast cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, and AIDS combined. It's, it's the leading killer. And this is a service that we're going to see at some point in, in our future. We're going to look back and say, what were we thinking? You know, just like not having the uh, fire extinguishers or not having uh, EMS ambulance services out there. This is a natural evolution of technology and need and being able to save lives. In some other places across the country, such as New York, Pennsylvania, and Delaware, every school is equipped with an AED. We hope the same will be true here soon. Preparing to shock everyone Clear. I'm clear, you're clear, we're all clear. Delivering shock. Shock delivered. Just as important as the devices is the training that goes along with them. Training is important primarily so that when an individual really has to do this, that they have some familiarity with it. Um, it's a highly emotional situation when you're dealing with someone who is essentially not living and you're there to save their life. And uh, it's a very simple machine and it's a very simple procedure. But it's, it's a good idea to give people the, the opportunity to be able to practice and to feel comfortable with the equipment before they actually have to use it. What the AEDs offer is the ability for a lay person to apply the device and deliver the shock that will get a person, convert their heart rhythm back to a normal rhythm um, with this device. You don't need to be highly trained. Um, training is wonderful, but anyone could use the device, take it off the wall wherever it's stored, and be prompted through what you need to provide the defibrillation. You don't need to be a critical care nurse with a critical care background. You can be somebody who's a lay person that's trained to use this. The equipment itself is indemnified. You know, they guarantee that it's going to work. You need to follow the instructions that it says, you know, about applying it and um, then letting it make its decision whether this is a situation to shock someone or not. So it takes all the decision making out of the person who's the lay person. You know, you just need to know how to be trained to use it correctly. And uh, it's not highly technical, it's very simple. Do not touch patients. So the machine is analyzing again. Evaluating heart rhythm. I'm such a believer in the need for AEDs that I carry one around with me in my car. They're really very simple to use. You just open the case, and push the on button. Call for help now. Remove clothing from chest. All you do now is follow the voice direction the machine gives you. Pull red handle to open bag. Peel each pad off blue plastic. And apply pads to exposed chest. Do not touch patient. Evaluating heart rhythm. Stand by. Preparing to shock everyone Clear. Do not touch patient. Delivering shock. Shock delivered. Once the pads are placed on the patient, the machine checks the heart rhythm. The machine will only shock the patient if the heart is in a fatal rhythm. You can't make a mistake. This is a very safe system.
One of Salinas Valley Memorial's Heart Save partners is Poppy Hills Golf Course in Pebble Beach. General Manager Tyler Jones remembers the day when a golfer here was saved with an AED. Yeah, I remember the day vividly. It was, uh, I was in the clubhouse talking to somebody in the restaurant and I looked over and saw our head professional uh, at the time running out of the golf shop with the defibrillator in his hands. Uh, I went over to see what was happening and uh, they said there was an incident on the second green and someone had gone down with a heart attack. And I'll never forget coming down and, and seeing Richard on his hands and knees with the gloves on and, and administering the defibrillator to Mr. Arrigo and I think it actually was several times, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten times that it took to revive him. And, and Community Bank is putting AEDs in each of its branches, protecting customers and employees. Well, I think, uh, you know, all of our, our board of directors and all the management and all of our staff, we're all community members and we realize the need and uh, the good that AEDs can do in our community. And uh, we have 14 branches throughout the three county area and it just made a lot of sense. It's something we wanted to do. Poppy Hills is committed to uh, using the AED devices to uh, save lives. Uh, we have hundreds of people through here daily and the opportunity for a heart attack to happen is uh, you know, pretty high and we want to be able to uh, save lives and impact people's lives in a positive way. It's a big investment, but it's important. You know, I think many of us have seen personally what uh, an AED can do and prevent and uh, we feel that's important. Little by little more offices, more businesses uh, are really looking at this and seeing the positive results of, of having the AED in the training. And, you know, will it happen every day? No. Will it happen once a month? No. But if it happens only once, it's worth people being prepared and knowing how to operate the machine and doing CPR. We'd like Monterey County to be a safe place to work. Uh, we think it's the ultimate company benefit to provide an AED for your employees. Um, you know, 90% of cardiac arrest happen outside the hospital setting and where most of the people spend their time is at work. Here's our ADD. It's in the medical bag, which we take along all the time. Center 622 station. Six right here. We call it a defense. One of the strongest advocates for AEDs is in Sand City, where Police Chief Michael Klein is leading an effort to get AEDs in patrol cars throughout Monterey County. Patrol cars, because they are out on patrol 24 hours a day, seven days a week, have a response time to a location of an incident within two, three minutes in an urban area, anywhere. We are there uh, five minutes, six minutes prior to any ambulance, and certainly uh, before a uh, fire truck, in most cases, arrives on scene. Consequently, uh, to have an uh, opportunity to deploy an AED and save a life, I think is absolutely essential. I like the idea of having the ADDs in the vehicles, in the patrol vehicles. It gives us access to a machine that's going to be needed and will be needed. Um, we're the first responders, we're usually there at the first time of the incident within a couple of minutes. And so we get to be able to assess the patient, be able to do CPR, and be able to use the ADD, as we call it, the DFib. It helps us to help the people that need the medical attention right away. All of San City's patrol cars have AEDs in them, and every city employee is CPR and AED trained. There's some things that are that are occurring now, like putting the AEDs in, in the, the police cars. That I think that's going to actually improve the, the whole response picture. Uh, again, police cars, there's more of them out in Monterey County at any moment in time, uh, and they're more on patrol. So uh, in theory, you would think that they are going to be closer when this happens. By having those readily available, um, I think we can save a whole lot minute more lives. And Working in the fire service, that's what our goal is. That's what our number one mission is. By putting AEDs out there in the field, um, everybody can become a first responder with the AEDs. That would mean we would save more lives. Um, um, and, and, and people would witness what I've witnessed here in the last couple of years, a couple of saves right in front of your eyes. For Monterey County, the ideal situation would be six minutes 
or less for anywhere in Monterey County that they have access to an AED. For those who survive sudden cardiac arrest, life is forever changed. Cosme Padilla, who is a Monterey County Planning Commissioner, suffered sudden cardiac arrest and was saved with a defibrillator. I couldn't believe it. Me? I mean, it always happened to somebody else, never to you. And sure, it can happen to you at any time. And it is. CPR is great, but that's only very basic. The next step that's really going to save a life is a defibrillator. And there's, I'm, a firm, I'm a walking example of that. It's going to save your life. It is going to save your life. I, I, the defibrillator will get your heart pumping again. Dr. David Casting, the medical director for Salinas Valley Memorial's Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, suffered sudden cardiac arrest last summer and is now a regular patient of the Heart Center's cardiac rehabilitation program. Our health is a very precious thing and uh, can be very fragile, much more fragile than we realize. As a result of what's happened to me, I mean, I look at it as I've won the lottery. Um, the, um, the chances of surviving what I survived are extremely remote and to have gone through it twice uh, makes it unbelievably remote. One of the other blessings that I had is I had luckily had people there who were CPR trained uh, because not only was I did they make my survival possible but I'm intact. There are certain events where uh, defibrillators are going to be critical in order to be life-saving and so obviously we need uh, not only equipment to be in more widespread use but also people trained in how to use them. If you would like to know more about defibrillators and how you can get them into your child's school or your place of business, contact Salinas Valley Memorial's Heart Save program at 759-1825. I'm Dr. Bob Morale. Thanks for joining us.